Hey guys, I'm Jim and I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021. On One it is. Um, it's a great product. I've been using it, having fun with it. And I had a photo that I was in On One with and I was like, you know, I like the idea of the photo, but there's just a whole lot of wrong that needs to be righted. And that's my goal in this video is to show you how I took this photo. My head's kind of itching. Sorry about that. Um, how I took this photo that started kind of you know, again, I like the raw materials, if you will, but I, it just needed work. Let me show you the photo. Here it is. This was in ooh, Bayou, I think. Uh, it's a little town in France. Uh, nor I don't know if it's Bayou. I forgot. Uh, anyway, it was a trip a number of years ago. But the bottom line is kind of wide angle shot and, you know, blue hour. Everything's blue, which happens a lot of times. And because it's wide angle, the buildings are leaning back. I love the light streak. I love that like half timbered building here. I just one of the things I love about Europe is the architecture and the street scenes. I shoot them a lot when I'm there. Anyway, love the idea of the photo. It just needs work, so I wanted to work on it. So what I did is in on one, I started over here, and actually I didn't start with um, tone and color. The first thing I did is actually go to transform. So lens correction is on, by the way. You can see that there's the original and there's the uh, current state. It recognized that this was shot with my Nikon, a 14 to 24, which is wide angle lens. Um, so it picked up that profile and went to work basically. So that that's helpful. I love that, that it's automatic, but transform really needs to happen. And that's where I come in and fix those verticals that are all kind of jacked up. And the way I do it in this photo is with their keystone tool, which I think is a great tool. You click on keystone and you get this box and you're like, what, what good is a box, Jim? Well, let me show you. This is what's cool about it is you can come in here and you can move these four corners around. So what you wanna do is basically, in this case, I need to fix the vertical. So I'm gonna line up these, uh, uh, these, this line on the right-hand side with that, where I wanna make sure that that's basically straight or should be straight um, in the photo. It, it was obviously straight in real life. But anyway, I've lined that line up over there to make it straight. And I'm gonna do the same over here with something. I'm gonna take this and line it up with that so that that's kinda straight. And I got to look and, you know, I think that's about right. So what I'm basically doing is using the transform tool to say, hey, that line should be straight in the photo and should uh, that line on the other side should be straight as well. Do something about it. So I hit enter and it did something about it. And what it did is it straightened the photo. Now you will see that there's areas that have been effectively cropped out. And so this is where you go into crop and you make the adjustment that you would need to make to kind of get rid of those. I was gonna get rid of some stuff anyway, which includes that door on the right-hand side. And of course, on this left-hand side, I've got to pull it in a little bit as well, simply because of the way it had to crop. And in fact, I'm gonna go a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna go something about like that. And I think that looks fantastic. So there we go. I've already got, a, I think, a much better looking photo. If I turn on the preview or off the preview, that's what I started with. And that's where I am. So my verticals have straightened. I just think it looks fantastic. Now, I gotta go fix the blue. I wanna bring up the detail. I wanna massage the light a little bit, all those kind of things. And that's when I started in on tone and color in order to make those kind of changes. And actually, you know what? That's not true. I see a spot there. I'm gonna get that real quick. There's a retouch brush. You click on that. You come over here on the little Band-Aid and click on that. And once I click on that spot, it's gone. So. That's kind of done and gone. I wanted to get rid of that because it kind of drives me nuts if I don't. And now I'm in tone and color. And what I want to do is make the adjustments that I'm uh, talking about, which is change the colors, the temperature, really um, bring up some of the detail, which I'm also going to do additionally with some filters uh, and just basically brighten the scene, rearrange the light a little bit. So I'm going to start over here in tone and color. And I'm actually going to start by adding some contrast, which is kind of contrary to what I just said, because that does not brighten up any of the photo. It actually makes it a bit darker, but that's okay. I'm just starting with contrast because it's first. Highlights are coming down negative 100. And now it's more blue and, and it looks worse, I'm sure you're thinking, but we're gonna fix that. That's where temperature comes in. I'm gonna lift the shadows a little bit. I went like a nine or 10 here. And now I'm coming down to temperature and temperature is gonna go hard right here. Whoa, not that hard. Uh, so something like 4250, 42, you know, 75, 4300. I'm gonna go like 40, 4250. And what you will often see me do in my videos is take the temperature left and the tint right. I'm actually doing the complete opposite in this photo. And that's simply because 
it was basically entirely blue. It looked like it had a tungsten light all over it. So I'm taking the temperature to the right to warm it up. And this time, I'm actually going to take the tint to the left, which is kind of to the green. I'm going to go like a negative 27 or 28, something about like that. But what that did is, um, as you as you saw, it basically removed a lot of that kind of purplish uh, and blue kind of look that were, uh, was in the photo. So there is there's the before, and there's my current state. I think the colors now look very natural. Like that's, I can't remember because this was so many years ago, but that's probably what it looked like, right? The lines were straight. The light probably looked like that, maybe a little bit bluer, but I wanted to overcome some of that blue and it was quick and easy to do. And now I just want to take the vibrance up because I do like my colors. And now that I've got some control over the amount of blue in the photo, I want to do some enhancements. The vibrance has given me a little bit of kick and also that red streak of that passing car looks better, I think, having bumped up that vibrance. So I think so far we've we've really come a long way. Once again, if I show you the preview, I mean, very blue, just kind of, uh, you know, and now straighter lines. I think that's real. That looks like probably what it looked like. This is where I'm going uh, to go and kind of add some of my creative effects, things that I like to do. And my first filter that I'm going to add is actually the HDR look. I love using this tool or this filter on cityscapes because it does a great job of popping that photo, really giving it a little bit of a umph, for lack of a better word. Um, I've got a look here. I'm going to go a little bit higher on detail. And then clarity, I'm going to go to about 30 or 31. And as you can see, it's really crunching up some of the detail in the structures. But uh, I don't think the sky is getting messy, but I am seeing more spots in the sky. Easy to fix. I probably won't do that in this video because you saw how easy it was with the retouch um, button. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm noticing that in case you are. But I'm not going to work on that. But that, that HDR look, I think, is really just pumped up this photo. So there it is before and there it is after. It adds a little bit of brightness, a bit of crunch, that sort of thing. I really like that, but I am going to bring the highlights down here because I do want to control that sky. It's still a little bit too bright for me. So I'm pulling that back a little bit darker, which is making it bluer. That's okay. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of glow, like a you know 10 or 12. But overall, I mean, that's all I'm going to do in HDR look. But if you look at the before and then you look at the current state, that's just definitely more dynamic. It's got more dynamic range. It's a little crunchier, but I think in the right places, I think I think it looks pretty cool, my friends. Um, my opinion, of course, feel free to disagree, but I'm liking this so far. And I'm done with the HDR look, so now I'm going to go get color balance because one of the things I want to do is make a little bit more adjustment to those highlights. So I'm on highlights here. I'm going to pick a hue. i got to check my notes of about 223, so something about like that, which is firmly in the blue area. And then I'm going to go to about 65 or 70 on the amount, something like that. So creating a little bit more blue in those highlights because it was blue hour. But with the temperature adjustment that I did back um, on the develop tab, I really got rid of all that blue. I wanted to bring it back because I like the interplay of the warm tones down here in the buildings, the shop lights and the passing car, and then the contrast between that and the cooler tones in the sky because it was blue hour. So I want to bring back some of that blue and create some of that contrast in the color uh, overall. And then brightness, I'm going to take that down as well. And I'm going to go negative 100. And that's, again, simply because I want to control the, the overall exposure. And uh, it, well, not the overall exposure, but the exposure of those highlights. I want to darken it to make it look a little bit more like it's a little bit deeper blue hour. So that's what it looked like before. And that's what it looks like now. Basically, this tool allowed me to control a little bit better stuff in the sky which is exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, now one more tool and I'll be done. And this is the vignette. And I like the vignette tool here. They've got one I use a lot called Big Softy. I'm gonna click on that. It's, it's basically a preset, but I like it. I mean, you can see it looks pretty cool there. I'm gonna make a few adjustments. I'm gonna um, increase the size just a little bit, something, you know, 45 or so. Feathering stays there. And the roundness is gonna go, I had to look at my notes, a little bit left, something about like that. And that's really it. I mean, just a tiny little change. There it is before and after. But I think that vignette's kind of framing it nicely. And the feathering's at 100. In fact, I might, let me see if I change the side. No, I actually might pull it in a little bit because, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I like that a little bit more. It creates a little bit more darkness on that sidewalk over there because it's, it's collapsing the vignette by changing the size. So I'm bringing it in a little bit tighter. But I think the vignette adds a little bit to the overall mood. So if you look at the before, there it is, and the after, I think that's looking pretty sweet. Let me show you the entire before and after. That's what we started with. So 
buildings like falling backwards, too bright in the sky. And even though it was blue hour, the photo, the entire photo is blue. You know, that happens a lot in cities, of course, that the blue is basically showing everywhere. Doesn't look that great to me. I wanted to control the colors, pop the detail, manage the light, all the kind of stuff that I'm basically doing on every photo. And I was able to go from that photo to this photo, not to mention fixing the verticals. So to me, that's probably closer to what it looked like, minus the vignette, and maybe not quite as blue and as um, dark in the sky. But I got a much more interesting photo, in my opinion, a little bit more drama, which I like. And frankly, I was able to achieve what I wanted to achieve with the photo using these tools in on one photo raw 2021. It's powerful. It's fun. It's easy. I need to go take the spots out of this thing and then put it on Flickr because I put things on Flickr. I don't know if you're on Flickr, but if you are, find me there. I love Flickr. It's a great place for sharing. I don't share a lot on Instagram. Um, but anyway, I'm getting off topic. Thanks for watching, my friends. Have fun editing or whatever it is you're doing. But if you're editing photos, go have fun with it. I hope you're taking care of yourselves. I'll see you real soon in the next video. Thanks for watching and adios.